Harvey. There are so many tools available on the market today that you're probably most confused. These, however, are the tools that I recommend through the film. Now, I will start off with the obvious, a brush. Any brush is okay, actually. That's just a good, firm brush. With the strap on the back, makes it easy for you to hold it. Then to the scissors. The most important thing about a pair of scissors is that you do not need too much pressure this way to cut. Now, if you do need too much pressure, you will obviously can go through the dog's skin. If, in fact, they're very light, see how light those are? Then, if you're not using much pressure, in fact, to cut with them, well, then you're never going to cut the dog's skin. Now, these are very expensive hairdressing scissors. Some people, especially for the feet, have more success with the scissors with the little short blades that come from the sewing shops. I think they're called needlework scissors. Some people prefer ones that are blunt on the end so that they can't dig into the dog's flesh. But try scissors out and see what you're comfortable with. As I said before, these are my favourites. Now we come to the comb. I recommend this Osco comb with the coarse teeth on this end and the fine on the other. The coarse teeth are necessary for the dog's furnishings and beard because then they don't drag it out. Now where the Osco comb beats all the others is that it is actually drilled right through onto the very, very edge. The teeth run through onto the edge of the comb itself. The camera is just picking up that. See how the teeth go right through to the other side? And I find the Osco combs don't fall apart like some of the other cheaper brands do. So, if you can find the English Osco comb, that is the one you'll see me using throughout the film. This end on the furnishings and this end here on the body coat. Now, even better than using that end of your Osco comb on your body coat is this little fine flea comb, which happens also to be an Osco. Now, this is better than the wooden back one because it's much stronger. And for maintaining a body coat, those little combs, although expensive, are fantastic. Now, stripping knives. This is the knife you'll see me using throughout the film. These knives, unfortunately, are not made anymore. This is an old IXL knife, which was originally a fish scaling knife, actually. And on this end, you have it coming up at more of a point, and on that end, it's a little bit squarer. But the nearest thing that's readily available today is this mouth knife. And most of my puppy people use this. It's actually called a Dutch or Holland Mars knife. And you can see the numbers M320, 99M320 on it. And those are being made. They're very strong. They're a German knife. And they're nicely rounded and contoured on the end here. Fit over your thumb beautifully. And that is the knife that I recommend. To maintain your body coat, this one, a copy of the old pedigree that was made, is quite sufficient. These are fairly readily available, but they do fall apart. They do snap here between the blade and this edge. So if you can't get this knife, you can maintain a body coat with the magnet, which is an English one, very well known knife, the magnet, extremely popular. or some people, especially on a short coat, use just a hacksaw blade. And the old school use these, and they are quite successful, and you can get varying size teeth on hacksaw blades, and this one's been filed off here so that you can hold it without the teeth actually going into your hand itself. So that is a choice of tools to maintain your coat. As far as stripping knives and coat maintenance are concerned, 
this German reel, made by Hausner, is worth a mention. These are fairly readily available. I personally don't recommend them for stripping because I like my teeth to go right to the end. But a lot of people have a lot of success with those and they are a dual purpose knife really for both stripping and maintaining a coat. Last but not least, you have an ordinary carpenter's file, a second cut for doing the nails. Now, a lot of people suffer with sore hands, stripping dogs for long periods of time. You'll see that my hands are actually calloused. Here and my thumb here. Now, I don't use anything at all on my hands. Over the years, I've found they have got hardened to holding the knife like so for hours on end. But if you're not used to stripping dogs by the hour, a lot of people find that one of these little paper um, thumb things available from the newsagent are handy. And I know people that uh, have great success with those, so give that a try. Resin made for sportsmen is another thing that people sometimes dip their fingers into which saves their hands a bit. I personally found it a bit drying but you might like to give that a go. And to save your index finger, these little rubber things are available from news agents. They slip over your finger like so and that certainly saves your hand when you're using the knife. But I find they perish and so on, but you might like to use them. They're also available at news agents. They're just a little piece of rubber like so. Or you might like to just use the age-old elastoplast or leucoplast. Just a little piece around your index finger like so. From there, around like so, and cut it off about there. And that will certainly save your finger if you find you're starting to get blisters. But it is a lot of hard work stripping your dog. And if you persevere, I think you'll find that your hands will eventually harden. The last thing is just a rough towel for the coat or an old nappy. Now it is mandatory that you strip your dog on a table. The dog equipment people make folding tables like this one that you can take around to the dog shows and the legs collapse nicely like this so that you can put it easily in the boot of your car. These are all very well but I find that they're a little bit too high to groom an Airedale on. However, the rubber on the front is a super surface and they all have this. However, that rubber is available from some of the rubber shops. For home use, you'll see me using this. This was a kindergarten table. It has an Estepole top, just straight wood, extremely sturdy legs, so you'll see me at times actually sitting on the edge of the table myself and putting the dog across here. Now to keep the dog steady while I'm actually grooming it, I have this homemade noose. It is just a couple of pieces of wood like so. This has holes on the end of this piece, which fits onto just a carpenter's vise on its side, like so, so that the prongs are uppermost. You simply clamp this onto the table, you pop the piece of wood on the top, and that holds your dog nice and steady. Come on, work time. Good girl. You see how used to getting on the table she is? And you put with a choke chain, that onto a cup hook, and that is a far more acceptable height on which to strip a dog. Now training a dog to stand on a table, which I do from the time the puppy's six weeks old, has the advantage when you take the dog to the vet. It also keeps your dog still so that you're not chasing it all over the floor to do bits of here and there. And the dogs know that once they get on this table, there's something going to be done on it, and they accept that very, very nicely. The advantage of the noose on this spine means that if you're working on the front of the dog, it's held steady forward like so. But if 
you want to work on this side of the dog, you can simply slip the whole thing around the back like that, and that gives you a lovely free rein on here. So do train your dog to stand on the table. It makes the whole thing easier for you.